Is it already that time again? Yep, it's time for the Artie Boy Game Jam 2.0. Although this is my second time writing for Artie Boy Magazine, it's my first time experiencing the joy and creativity the Game Jam seems to inspire. I was asked to take a look at all 13 of the entries featured on the final poll and give my take on each. This task was a joy. Not only did I get to fire up the Artie Boy and play a bunch of fun new games, but I also had that old holiday flame stoked to my heart. I never would have thought Artie Boy could be such an important part of nurturing my holiday spirit this year but I'm a better person for it. Some might even say I'm more festive, or I'm in a bit of a frenzy. It's possible I've gone kooky for moving too many x tree sections around. But enough about me. Let's take a quick look at all 13 entries and go over their presentation and playability. Not all entries are directly related to the theme holidays, but they are all a welcome gift to me this frigid Illinois winter. I've decided to knock them out in alphabetical order. We have Ardu Turf Masters. The programmer describes the game as an homage to Neo Turf Masters for the Neo Geo. Of course, on the Ardu Boy, it takes on a slightly different presentation. You are given a full 18-hole course and tasked with getting the lowest score possible. Sounds like golf so far, right? The entire map is side-scrolling from the left to the right with varied distances and pars for each hole. The map features multiple bunkers and water traps, as well as various types of rough terrain to take away from your max drive distance should you land in one. The one missing factor for most golf games I noticed right away was wind, but given the amount of depth and complexity the user has given to a 2D side-scrolling reduction of golf, its absence can be easily forgiven. I really enjoyed this game. It was easy to understand once I had played it for a bit, and as a bonus, it saves your score with EEPROM so you can power down the system or even load another game onto the Art Boy and still come back to where you left. Always make sure you check ahead with your drive distance to avoid landing in hazards. Also. Make sure not to pass the flag or you're out of bound and lose a stroke. This game didn't really evoke a holiday spirit at first glance, but then I used my noodle to ponder its place. What do a lot of people do when they're on holiday? That's right, they golf. So, although it may not be as festive as some other entries, it justifiably belongs within this list of holiday Ardu Boy jams. Next, from user Obono, I present Kriboki Cat. In this game, you're a cute little kitty trying to save all the presents Santa has dropped. You move from the left to the right and bounce them off of your back for two minutes at a time, forever chasing that high score. The title screen is pretty hilarious, as the main character seems to be swiping at Santa's face. Is this the reason all the gifts have been dropped? If so, I suppose the kitty is redeeming itself by saving the gifts for the children with its magical back. Our cuddly character has an incredibly useful ability in that every time a gift contacts its back, the gift becomes two gifts. This means you can allow some gifts to fall, as long as you keep some in the air at all times. But remember, the more you have at the end, the faster you'll accumulate points. The game is over when you drop all gifts or when the timer has expired. Towards the end, you'll be thrown into fever mode and your back will split gifts into three instead of two. This results in a satisfying rapid score climb depending on how well you've done so far. This game very much adheres to the holiday theme, as it has snow, presents, Santa, and many other festive features. I think getting the high score is enough incentive to play multiple times. The graphics and sound are a joy, and it gets extra points for letting you meow by pressing down. Staying comfortably within the holiday theme, but with a bit more spring in our step, we move on to the next entry by user P. Harap. Easter Panic, as the author says, is based off a recent Google Doodle. It reminded me of a computer language they taught us in 7th grade called Logo. You instruct the rabbit in this game what to do in a series of steps or programs and then set him in motion. The goal is to collect all the Easter eggs within a set number of steps. The controls may take a second to learn if you haven't played a game like this before, but once you figure out the second puzzle, you'll have a pretty good idea. The controls are on Easter Panic's entry page, so check them out and check this game out too. I saw Uncle Sam punch a turkey. In user crates game, Festive Fight, you'll get to do a lot of punching. As the creator says, holiday mascots from throughout the calendar must fight in order to compete for the affection of the children throughout the world for some weird reason. This game is unique so far in that it can be played with a second player simultaneously on one Ardu Boy. I wasn't able to try this mode, but it seems like it would work well. Each character only has two moves, either attack or retreat charge forward and dodge back to be the last mascot standing. This game definitely fits the holiday theme, even featuring the word festive in its title. Nice touch. In Hello Commander by user Fmanga, you gotta shoot some elves. 
That's about the only holiday connection I've found so far, besides the shadowy bunny giving you instructions between levels. Spooky. This is a fairly complex turn-based strategy game. I haven't played it long enough to give it a fair review, but I can say that I like it so far. There's a balance to moving and attacking, and the terrain seems to affect approaches and attacks. Eventually, I believe you can add more characters to your party, and it would be far more exciting than the footage I've obtained. I suggest checking this game out, as it might provide a lengthy Artaboy experience. And then there's Holiday, by users Morgan Lapis and Serendipity Duda. First, I can easily say I've never played another game like this in Artaboy. And I can also say it's definitely one of the most unique games I've played on any platform recently. In this game, you meet up with Frosty the Snowman. In a series of response-based story arcs, you can possibly end up dating Frosty. He'll ask you back to his igloo, and the rest is left to chance slash fate. Frosty always seemed to melt away at the last minute, the few times I tried. But the creators promised multiple endings, and I think may have even added more since the version I have was released. Of course this one fits the theme. It's Frosty the Snowman like you've never known him before. Santa needs cookies. In user Shadow Wizard's game Cookie Cookies, Santa's pretty much done all the hard work already. He's filled up the stockings and hidden all the presents. Now he just needs to eat all them delicious cookies. And he needs to refuel quick, because the kids are going to wake up soon. This is a pretty addictive game that keeps track of the highest scores in EEPROM, if you so desire. You have to eliminate all the different cookie shapes by clicking on them when two or more are touching horizontally or vertically. If you learn all the tricks, you can set up chains and combos that are worth more points. Definitely worth checking out, and definitely was festive enough that it made me hungry for Christmas cookies. Presents are falling from the sky. Well, prizes are. In Prize Frenzy by user GoTRP, you're a basket moving around through space and capturing as many prizes as possible, seen as delightfully tied packages. You continue playing as long as you can, avoiding bombs, as catching just one means game over. You also need to collect little clocks to add to your time meter on the right. Once that runs out, or once you bomb out, the frenzy is over. No doubt about it, this game is a holiday gem reminiscent of Kaboom on the Atari 2600. User Kame, uh, C-H-A-M-E, decided Santa needed to swing his gift sack around more. In this creator-admittedly Rygar-inspired game, Santa moves along a scrolling field from left to right, with some freedom of movement to sacks and butt. He can move between three horizontal plates and is able to perform some satisfying swing attacks using the directional buttons. Your score is tallied on the right side of the screen. Capture as many presents as possible and kill as many enemies as Kris Kringle craves. But don't get hit, or Christmas is cancelled. Speaking of ruined Christmas, user Madya121 has submitted Santa's Factory, an endless arcade game. The premise is both good and bad. This year, too many children behave themselves. Now, there's way too many gifts, and they need to be properly directed through the factory pipes. Your job is to use a pipe plunger thing to push presents into their proper packages. But be careful. The pressure is on, as one mistake will gum up the entire works, and that's right. Christmas will be blue all because of you. You messed up. Santa's here again in his final alphabetical appearance in the Artaboy Game Jam 2.0 entries list. User E. Reed has submitted Santa's Happy Little Packer, a fun little puzzle game. As the creator says, the rules are quite simple. Fill the sleigh with the gifts. There are a lot of different shapes made up of a total number of blocks that matches the volume of the sleigh. You must fit all of them together without overlap. There's no rotating of the boxes. Also, once you place one down, it's there until you complete the level or restart. Successfully pack the sleigh and you're on to the next level. There's ribbons on the blocks, so it's holiday themed. For entry number 12, we have Working Holiday by user Ardu Beast, with assistance from students from Bard College at Simon's Rock in Massachusetts. In this game, humorously, you are on holiday, but still must actively avoid work. You control the character Nervous Nelly and must avoid an onslaught of work-related items while moving from left to right. The sprites in this are nice, and effective enough in their presentation you can always tell the setting, be that a city street, or the hallway of a school, or even the inside of a kitchen. The adventure continues in groups of those three settings, ever increasing in difficulty. You can continue to avoid work until the brutal tide of items pushes you all the way to the left edge. Then you have worked too hard 
and the game will be over. Once again, I must come in using Holiday in the title to fit the theme. And now, for the final entry of the games I'm talking about. Why is it last? Because alphabets. An Xmas Tree minigame by user Mr. Blinky, I felt myself transported back to school once again to a puzzle I had in that same 7th grade math class where the teacher took us to the computer lab to hide turtles, which is another logo reference. You start the level out with an undecorated tree on the far left. Your task is to move all five of its sections to the far right. You can only move one section at a time and are unable to place a larger piece on top of a smaller piece. It all makes sense once you start playing. The graphics are lovely and accurately portray a living room where you're moving your tree around all weird. It's definitely worth finishing this puzzle, however, as the tree becomes decorated and dazzling if you properly complete its rightmost depiction. Now that I've briefly gone over each of these games, I'd like to point out that I didn't really talk much about the sound in the games. It's really tough to record on the Art of Boy in a video formatted like this, but I'd like to commend the wonderful use of sound in many of these entries. If I ever want to be transported back to this magical winter moment in my memory, I can simply load up many of these entries and be transported back to a jam in place. And jam it has. I was honored to write about all these games, and even more delighted to play them. I will continue to monitor them as versions are improved upon and updates are added. Thanks a lot for watching, and I hope you recover well from your holidays.